Hello and welcome to another edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. Right off the bat on today's show, Tesla is back in the news and not for a good situation because apparently there's been another death inside of one of their autopiloted automobiles. Now this deal is only coming to light months and months after the situation, mainly because of a lawsuit that has been filed by the owner who tragically lost the life of his son. And obviously our prayers go out to the family as they grieve. But the fact that the vehicle didn't send a message, and Tesla claims that any time one of their vehicles has been involved in an incident, it actually sends off a message to Tesla HQ, giving a lot of details about exactly what position the vehicle is in and what options were actually running on the vehicle when the incident took place. The fact that the vehicle apparently was torn up in such a way or in such bad shape that it never ever sent the message, that's why Tesla's not finding out about the situation until the lawsuit comes to surface. Now this is going to sound callous and cold, but honestly I think that autonomous vehicles are going to save a lot of lives in the long run. And it's definitely terrible for me to even say that this guy's loss is for the greater good, losing the life of his son. But I don't really care that Tesla's actually testing their autonomous vehicles on the public itself. So we're going to have to wait and see what comes of this lawsuit and what comes of the autopilot feature heading into the future. Next up on the list, Volkswagen back in the news and back for more bad news because the lawsuits are really starting to pile up. In fact, we're seeing lawsuits from groups, not just government entities, but a lot of investment groups that are wanting to recoup some of their money because Tesla's stocks have gone into the tank thanks to this whole cheating scandal including a pair of German states inside of Germany itself are now suing Volkswagen over the diesel scandal situation over loss of monies. Also, according to Bloomberg, there's a group called the BlackRock Organization, which is actually a group that's one of the largest run private investor groups on the planet. Apparently these folks have lost a ton of money in this situation as they're big investors in Volkswagen and no doubt they have some pretty deep pockets so they're going to be going after Volkswagen quite aggressively. I still think that Volkswagen's easily going to come out the other side of this, maybe a better company, but it's going to be a lot slimmer than it once was. Next up on the list, Honda is showing off the new hatchback version of the Civic. Now this thing debuted here in the United States several months ago, but this is the European version of this vehicle. And we got official specs ahead of its Paris debut, including a pair of gasoline variants and a diesel variant. The vehicle's opening Savoie comes in a 1 liter turbocharged 3 cylinder that makes 128 horsepower. You can also get the same spec as the United States gets in just a 1.5 liter turbocharged 4, making 181 horsepower. Now that particular engine lineup comes with either a 6-speed manual or a CVT transmission. You can also get this vehicle in a diesel version, which is 1.6 liters in displacement, making 119 horsepower, and that comes with a bespoke 9-speed automatic transmission. Also hearing some rumors that we may get to see the brand new Type R that may make its debut at the Paris Motor Show ahead of its launch, hopefully sometime next year. And that diesel version, on the other hand, too, is not going to come out until way late in 2017. So if you want to get your grubby mitts on that, you are going to have to wait a fair amount of time. Next up on the list, a lot of little tidbits coming out about the Ford Motor Company, including a very official-looking document claiming the horsepower ratings of the brand new Ford Raptor. Now, Ford has actually come out and said that the new Raptor's twin-turbocharged EcoBoost 3.5-liter V6 is going to make more horsepower than the outgoing 6.1-liter normally aspirated V8. And according to this document, it's going to make a fair amount more. They're claiming that this vehicle is going to make 450 horsepower and 510 pounds-feet of torque. Again, Ford has yet to say whether this official document is official or not, so we'll have to wait and see on that front. Some other interesting situations involving the Ford Motor Company are including that they are looking at building autonomous vehicles. In fact, they're claiming that you're going to be able to buy a fully autonomous vehicle from Ford in is under 10 years, in fact, by the year 2025. 
And they're going to take a little page out of the book that happened when hybrids first came out and EVs first came out, at least in bigger selling markets. When they built the very bespoke styling for those machines that made them look quite unique and definitely when you stared at one you knew instantly that it was a hybrid or an EV. Ford's going to take a page out of that book and the autonomous vehicles will get its own styling that will be just for those particular machines. So it'll be kind of interesting to see what Ford may have of its sleeve as far as their unique styling in those vehicles. Next up on the list, we talked about this particular machine, the last ever version of the final edition of the Mitsubishi Evolution 10 that was going to go up for auction to all the funds going to a couple of big food banks in the California area. Well, the vehicle has since sold at auction for a price of $76,400 U.S. dollars. Now, a lot of groups all over the old internets have been talking a lot about is it worth it or is it not? And you know what? In my mind's eye, it is absolutely worth it, worth it. especially for a lot of underprivileged folks who need to put food on the table. This is going to feed a lot of folks, and $76,000 is definitely going to feed a lot of people indeed. And the sheer fact that the owner, the new owner of this machine, is basically going to pay anything above the actual asking price for the machine itself as far as what it would sell in the dealership. It's actually basically going to be a tax write-off for that person. So it's actually going to end up being in the real good for that particular person. So I'm plenty happy that this person opened up their wallets big for $76,000. And a lot of that money is going to do a lot of good inside of California. And last up on the list, well, if you haven't heard it by now, I'm going to tell you officially because the Grand Tour is coming to an Amazon Prime account near you November 18th of 2016. So rejoice. We get to see James May, Jeremy Clarkson, and Richard Hammond back in action again. I cannot wait for this new program, which is just a little under two months away from the taping of this particular program. If you haven't seen the new teaser trailer video for this, I've got it up on the Facebook page or hunt around the YouTubes. You'll definitely be able to find it. And that's all there was that I thought was worth talking about for this edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. Don't forget to like us over on the Facebook page. The link's down in the show notes. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you can do so at any time and get the first dibs on the brand new shows as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon.